Hello and welcome again to RC Model Reviews. Today, something new, the RunCam HD recording video camera. And this is the little beastie here. This was sent to me for review purposes. Actually, yeah, this will make you laugh. I got an email from the RunCam people saying, we're going to send you a personalized inscribed version of the RunCam pre-release for your review. And we're gonna get it you know, inscribed. I thought, ooh, hey, this will be nice. Nicely inscribed RunCam camera. So um, here's, Here's the camera they sent me, and here is the inscribing. Um, take a look at that. That's just beautiful, isn't it? That's gorgeous. Someone's gone to a lot of trouble there to inscribe my name on this camera, and I appreciate the gesture very much. Thank you so much, RunCam. Excellent. Anyway, back to the camera. Um, so I don't unbox, but there's a little manual, you know. I mean, most of the stuff you can figure out, it's not hard. There's the camera, there's a little mount and a lead, which enables you to run it from external power and also get video out, which is handy if you want to use it for FPV. But we'll look at latency later because that's always a big issue. And of course, the, the USB to mini USB lead that we have so many of. I wish we could find another use for these. We could weave baskets out of them, use macrame or something, because everyone's got about a million of these, but they include one. So you've got a million and one if you get this camera. One thing you'll probably have noticed immediately about this camera is that it looks very similar to another camera that is quite often used in the hobby. And I think you know which camera we're talking about. No, not that one. You're talking about this one. It's the Mobius, the Mobius HD. And in fact, let's do a little bit of a side by side and take a closer look at these two. Now the similarities in shape and form and function are quite obvious. I mean. In the case of both cameras, we have a heat sink here. This one has run cam written on it. Take that piece of wire off there. Has run cam written on it. This one, of course, has the two separate bits of the one heat sink there that we're familiar with, with the Mobius. There are three buttons and they do the same job on both cameras. We've got our power and uh, a power button there, a mode button and our shutter button, same as on the Mobius. All pretty much the same. If we go to the back, you'll see that even on the back, the lineup of the micro SD card, the mini USB are the same. The little holes in the corner are the same. Underneath, well, there's not a lot to choose between them. It's not exactly the same. It's not exactly the same plastic. They have made some changes, so it's not identical. Um, on the side, of course, my Mobius doesn't have this lovely inscription on it, so that's one difference. And on that side, looking at the front, even the mic holes are in pretty similar locations. Now, um, this one, the run cam, of course, I think they provided with the wide angle lens, which is great because I was going to get a Mobius with wide angle. These are just the standard angle lens on the Mobius. Um, but as you can see, all in all, you know, it's a, it's a pretty close facsimile of the Mobius HD. Right, let's compare the weights. Here is the run cam. Comes in at a nice 42, 41, 42 grams. It's not so bad. Let's try the Mobius. 43. So, yeah, it's really, you know, 42. Same weight. So, nothing to choose from in terms of weight. Now, if you want to see the specs of the camera, tune in in HD, and you'll see that it's the specs are pretty much the same as the Mobius 2. We've got uh, 10, uh, 1080p and th or 1080 and 30p. We've got 720 in 30p or 60p, but I can bet you any amount of money you like that the 60p is really only 30p with every frame doubled, because that's all the little processes in these cameras can generally provide. So don't expect to get true 60p out of this thing, but I will check and make sure, because who knows, they could have surprised me. Um, it has all the other stuff. The output is in MOV file, which is good because that's an H.264 rather than in motion JPEG that some cameras produce, which is not quite so good. It'll output video in NTSC and PAL. And uh, yeah, um, takes up to 64 gigabytes TransFlash micro SD cards. Has an image flip capability. You have to do it through the software. Um, 750 milliamp LiPo battery, continuous recording greater than 90 minutes. Yeah, greater than 90 minutes, which is pretty good, if that really does ring true, but we'll test it out and find out. And it'll run on DC 5 volts, drawing half an amp. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, in fact, let's have a look at that, 750, yeah, so 90 minutes or so, if the battery delivers its full capacity. Now, there's a little lead here, which has, uh, I showed you the lead before, it has video out, if you want to use it as an FPV camera, or hook it up to your TV set, because apparently it has... TV playback. If you plug it into a monitor, you can actually playback files on the camera, which the Mobius doesn't do that I'm aware of. And that's really great because nothing worse than get into the field, looking at your, your camera and thinking, oh my goodness, what's on that card? I don't know. I don't have a laptop. I, my smartphone doesn't read these files or whatever. So if you've got a playback function, plug it into your LCD monitor and away you go, or your video glasses even. And there's the separate power input. Of course, being five volts, you must run this through a UBEC or run it off the receiver, a spare power outlet 
on your receiver input pins and see how you go there. So yeah, all in all, it looks pretty good, um, but nothing to rave about. So why, why, is, why would they bother? Why would you bother making a camera that is almost as good as a Mobius? Well, I'm thinking price point, and they're, they're pitching this on the basis of value. This is Supposedly they're gonna pitch this at a lower price point than the Mobius. So if it's as good as a Mobius for less money, then hey, I for one will be happy. But let's take a look so far, First thing I noticed when I picked it out of the box was I bumped the on button and it came on. Look, um, now that's annoying because if you have this sitting in your pocket um, or in your box and you, you bump that button, that's annoying. Um, you you want to, I program my Mobius so that I have to hold it down. That should turn off hopefully. Yep, there we go. No, it's back on. How do you turn it off? Oh, hold that button down. Okay, is it off now? Yes. Um, I program my Mobius for the long button turn on because I don't want to bump it accidentally. Um, what we'll look at this is the software. Apparently there is software I can download to enable me to configure this, which is great because that's what makes the Mobius so good. There's so many configuration options on that piece of uh, configuration software. So I have to go out and get myself an SD card first. Back in a moment. Okay, let's check out the spectrum output of this thing on the UHF band. But first of all, I'm going to check out the Mobius. Now, what have we got here? Where's our reference? That looks all right. I'll turn this on. This is the Mobius camera. It's got the lock. There we go. Mobius camera is on. And, well, there's pretty much nothing. There's, if we hold it really close, we're getting a general spread across the band, but there's really not an awful lot at, in this case, probably about 50 millimeters away. So let's turn off the Mobius. And let's turn on the run cam in exactly the same place. There we go. Yeah. Again, there is not a lot of noise. I'll hold it right up like I did with the Mobius. In fact, there's an awful lot less. I've got this right against the antenna here, and there's virtually no noise on the 433 band. That is brilliant. Turning it right round. Yep. Oh. Need to charge the battery in my spectrum analyzer. But that is absolutely brilliant. This is much lower noise than the Mobius. Now I thought for a minute, notice that the Mobius is black, this is silver. I thought, well, wonder if these people have been clever enough to make this a conductive case. Uh, you know, the silver might be a conductive covering, which would explain the lower RF noise on the 433 meg band. But I put my meter on here and no, there's no conductivity even when I push through what may be a plastic coating. So maybe we'll have to have a look inside and see if maybe there's a, a conductive coating on the inside of this case. And look at this. This is looking decidedly like it could be a copper flash, a conductive coating on the inside of the plastic case. Let's measure it with the meter and see if it actually is conductive. Oh yes, look at that. It's, it's a dead short, point, 0.2 of an ohm roughly. So thumbs up to the run cam people. They have taken the initiative of making the plastic case act like a complete shield for any radio frequency noise by coating it with a copper flash, which then effectively screens out all that noise. Now, as you can see by way of comparison, I've got the run cam on the left here and I've got the Mobius on the right. Now, this is a, a probably 18 month old Mobius. Um, this one actually I destroyed. It, it actually had such a big smash that the battery was pushed into the mini USB connector there and all the battery content spewed out. So it completely destroyed everything, including the card that was in it at the time. So yeah, this is a dead one. Now, it's interesting to note that, well, you know, basically the layout, some of the sense element looks slightly different. This is not exactly the same as that. Uh, but, you know, I mean, for all intents and purposes, the battery connectors in pretty much the same place. Um, yeah, it is, it is, what should we say, inspired by the Mobius, very clearly inspired by the Mobius. And there's that big battery there. Now I do have my Mobius battery, the one that, uh, as you can see, the, the corner of it was pushed into this USB connector here with a very hard landing. And I'll see if I can find any indication of the capacity of the Mobius battery. This piece of black sticky on here. Excuse me while I do this out of shot because it would be kind of silly to try and do it in shot. I'd just make a mess of it all. And this one says, well, this is only 520 milliampere hours according to the label. I don't know if you can read that, probably can't. It says 520 milliampere hours. This says 750, but I think we all know how highly variable uh, those figures can be. But if we look at it, it does look, I mean, I'll move this up a bit so we can see. It does look as if the run cam battery is bigger than the Mobius battery. So I think the newer Mobiuses, Mobii, have a bigger battery than these older ones. So it'll be interesting to see whether this does deliver the promised greater than 90 minutes recording capability. But I've got to say, 
The general build quality looks quite nice. As you can see, it's all surface mount, as you would expect. But I mean, there's um, you know, there's nothing to grizzle about there. The soldering seems very nice. The layout is, is well, there's not much to see on this side of the board. All the processor is on the back side. I'm not going to get too carried away ripping into it because you can get a pretty good indication from there. And if you compare that to the Mobius, I mean, you know, there's not a lot of different different color solder resist on the board, but yeah, you know, it's uh, obviously inspired by. So there you go. That's the that's the guts of the run cam. I think. And we've seen that it, it's got this wonderful shielding. Maybe it's time now to actually just go and see what kind of picture it produces, because that's ultimately got to be the bottom line. Now, I was going to do some basic setup on this before I took the camera out and used it, but unfortunately, I downloaded the file from the place mentioned in the manual, and I was a little bit concerned because it just is called uh, has to do company name. They haven't even put the company name in it yet. Remember, this is a what did they say? Uh, first user edition of the camera it's pre-release so you've got to expect some things and when i try and run this it basically just tells me oh the can't run because there's a missing dll um hmm, okay well this is windows xp pretty generic windows xp installation so i don't know why it can't find the dll which is called mfc 100 u dll so meh, maybe something else is wrong who knows um, so i can't set the camera up so we're going to be using it with all the defaults which probably means the time date stamps on probably does it in one minute intervals of video who knows what's going on so unfortunate that they haven't got that software in an operative state uh, because it's really hard to review a camera when you can't change any of the settings so how am i going to compare it to the good old mobius um, which i've tuned up to work just fine uh, but we'll do what we can and now it's time to go out to the field. I'm going to have to drive some 25 minutes to get to somewhere I can actually do some flying. And then we'll see if we can get some footage with the Runcam HD HD recording camera.